for another book review and that is going to be for The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson and just saying if you've been with my channel for a while you would know that I've already made a book review of this so really this book review is more for The Heart of Betrayal by Mary E. Pearson but I'm adding this in for the beginning because I reread The Kiss of Deception before I read The Heart of Betrayal because this book messed with my mind so much that I had to reread it so I could actually read it knowing the right characters and knowing what was going on and just to have a real fresh mind and it's actually the first book I've reread it before like I'd never really been one to reread things so I was really happy to do that like it was a lot of fun but I definitely love both these books I have The Heart of Betrayal sitting on my shelf waiting for me to read and I don't know when I'm gonna get to it because I have so many things I gotta get through but I'm still very excited for these books and they're just amazing. This book is about a girl called Leah and she's the princess of Mor Morangan. Morangan, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. I'm very bad with names. Morangan, yes. And she is the princess in that kingdom and she has to marry the Prince of Dalbreak. On the day of her wedding, she decides that she doesn't want to be married so she leaves. She runs away and she takes her maid Pauline with her. She leaves and she goes to a small town called Terravin and that's where she spends a lot of her time and she finally feels free and able to do things and be able to live a life that she wants. But unknown to Leah is that the Prince of Dalbreak has gone to find her and an assassin has been sent to kill her from Venda. And she doesn't know who these people are so when two strangers come to the town and come to the inn that she's working in she doesn't know who they are and our really bad thing is we don't know which one's which either so we know that they're the assassin or the prince but we don't know which one's which and it's a bit of a discovery for us as well as for Leah and it's a very interesting book a lot of like you know deception is in this book and I really enjoyed it definitely had an amazing like definitely amazing cast of characters, a lot of female friendships, such an awesome book and I really enjoyed it and like having a second read of it's really made it a lot better for me and also made me really appreciate the love interest a lot more because I was kind of thinking the love interest was a different person than who it was. I got confused, that's why it was such a cliffhanger because when, you know, everything happened I had the wrong guy being the prince and the wrong guy being the assassin and I had to reread it so I could really understand and be able to like connect with the characters a lot more and I really enjoyed having that aspect and I just definitely think too that this book left on such a cliffhanger and this was actually the first book that I read this year so it's fun to have like you know not even a year later and I'm reading this one so I was very excited about it definitely enjoyed the book and you know I can't wait to finish the series finish the trilogy it's gonna be so awesome but I can't wait now I want to start getting into the heart of betrayal and I'm gonna warn you guys there will be spoilers in this book for what's happening in the Deception and for a bit of what's in this one because there's a few things I want to talk about about and I'm very excited so let's go. In the second half of The Kiss of Deception, Leah's on this like journey with Caden who is the assassin and Rafe being the prince. She's on this journey with Caden as he kind of takes, as he takes her hostage back to Venda to meet his Coraz Corazan. I think that's what they call the leader, the Corazan. It's the Comazar, Comazar, but she's there to meet him and she doesn't understand this world. She thinks they're all barbarians and I really enjoyed the development in this book of having Leah figure out that they're not necessarily barbarians they do make bad decisions but these people do have you know a heritage and a history and a culture and prayers that they make and songs and stories and just a big like a, just so much that's in their ancestry and it's just so amazing that there's so much stuff in this world and Leah starts you know really embracing it because she has to lie to the com commissar that she does want to be there and Rafe has to lie because he's there too he followed her he caught up to her and he's pretending to be a prince of Dalbreak's um like first man like um probably a messenger more like and um it's interesting too because like Leah's just found out that he's actually the prince like she fell in love with Rafe and he's the one that she was going to marry anyway. So Leah really had to confront her feelings for Rafe and they had a few arguments over it and having Leah so untrustworthy of him but now they've really discovered that they do love each other and they do care about each other and I'm just so team Rafe and Leah it is the best thing ever and I just love it so much. Like and just saying, with the Corazam, Cor Cor Corazam, I can't. He is the leader of like Venda. I cannot say his name. I feel so bad, but I really enjoyed him, and I really liked the aspects that he was kind of like the Darkling. Like as I was reading it, I'm just like, mm -hmm. another Darkling character. I, re I really enjoyed him, and he was so like conniving and manipulative, and he always got his way, and he always had a plan, and Leah would always figure these out, like 
just second too late and she had to deal with the stuff that he was doing to her and it was just like he was really rude to her and then when he like proposed to her and was like Leah you're gonna marry me or I'll kill Rafe and I was just like <gasps> oh like seriously it was so just interesting and what I really did like too is like how much the people started liking Leah like she was this foreign princess coming over but then they just really fell in love with her and she actually got accepted by this clan I just had a look in the book to find the name of the clan, and I don't think I can say it, but it's the clan of Merusara... Mara... Merasai. It's a real great honour to be, like, accepted by one of these clans, and I think it's because they know that Leah is part of this prophecy that the Queen of Venda generations ago made and they are accepting her and Leah like when she like because she over the journey she had she was really like starting to pick up their language and then like one night she just starts doing the prayers and then she also just sits on her like out her balcony window and on this area and she just sings to the people and tells them stories and that's kind of what the vendor queen used to do like again and it, generations back but the people just started really enjoying her and loving her and trusting her and that's why I think the Commissar really wanted to marry her because he wanted to control that and have the people back back behind him but just saying I really didn't like like him but he's like part of the book was very short-lived because Leah killed him in the end like she stabbed him when he killed one of like her friends and it was the worst thing ever but I was kind of really excited because I was like yes but I feel like there's going to be something worse because with this, it's Leah's fight, Leah's fighting against the dragon, but we don't know who the dragon is, and we sort of thought it was the Commissar, but the thing is, we didn't see him completely die. We know that he, she stabbed him, and he was gonna die, but I don't know, like, there might be magic that could bring him back, like, I can feel that happening, but I really did enjoy, like, his part in the book, and just how, like, dark and evil he was, and I was just like, love him. I really did like Rafe in the book as well, like because he's pretending not to be a prince and he's pretending not to have feelings for Leah and I really just liked how well trained he is in that aspect of being able to just like totally, you know, remain calm and just be like, mm -hmm, this bitch. Like there were so many things happening with Leah and he so many times he actually did like, you know, kind of run to go help and then he's like, oh, I can't do anything because I can't know I love her. And it was just like, he did such a good job but I really wish he was in the book a lot more. Like he seemed like more in the back in the story and I was like, there was more of Caden and I was just like, damn. I really did, I really do like Caden though as a character and I don't see him with Leah. See here with Rafe and she's clearly made a choice. It's not really a love triangle. Like some people say this book is a love triangle but she has clearly said that she does love Rafe and she cares about Caden but just not in a romantic way and I really do like that she does make that choice it's just that they've been ripped apart and they can't really do anything in the moment. The only thing with Caden though is I thought he was going to be like more brutish when he first got to this area because you know he's the assassin vendor like he's the one that kills everyone like I thought like it's I don't see how Leah could have made him soft like unless he's always been like this person and they think that's their highest level assassin like he has killed people in the book but I just thought I'd see more of that like rough side to him but it wasn't really there and I was kind of like Neh. and just saying my favorite thing right is with Rafe coming in and he's only got four soldiers with him that are gonna get him out of there and then slowly they start coming in the story and then my favorite thing ever is Sven he's like personally practically Sven practically raised him but Sven came in pretending to be this lord like he killed the other lord and came in and then the moment Rafe saw him he like died he was just like <laughs> my god and it was just the best thing ever having them all in different areas of the place and then like their escape was just on point like they're all they're all coming in getting over to the soldiers getting out of there like you know Leah kills the commissar then Caden starts fighting and also Griff like my favorite character legit Griff like I was like he's gotta be a spy let him be a spy and he was like the guy that was with Sven when they were locked up for two years and I don't know why I didn't connect that but like I really did enjoy Griff, but I thought it was hilarious that he's always just like, Leah's gonna stay! She's gonna be our new princess because she, she killed the Commissar. She's now the Commissar because whoever kills him becomes the Commissar and Griff really wants her to be the one and then she's gone and Griff's trying to help, like, he's trying to get her but also stop the others from killing her and then they finally get on this raft and they go down the river. Then Malik, you know, shoots Leah in the back and the side and then she falls out the boat. The biggest thing was that Rafe jumped out of the boat after her and I was just like, and then he lost her and then I was just like oh no this is just what we need Leah's dead she's dead it's gone it's happened 
But then she, then Ray finds her and she's awake and she's got all these arrows sticking into her and I'm just like, this is the worst possible way this book could end and I just need the next story because like, I'm freaking out. They're split up from everyone. They're on the right side of the river though. They're on the side that's going to take them home. But they're split up from the Sven and all the other boys and I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> I just seriously, it was just like so intense this book, like even though there's a lot of vendor stuff and it kind of seems like, it got a bit repetitive but it was definitely interesting and I really did enjoy reading and I was always going around like yeah, yeah, yeah. Another thing I really liked about the book too is having these like chapters with Pauline and like the first time I saw her chapter I'm just like she's gonna see Michael and she's gonna freak out and then she's gonna hate Leah and then she won't help anymore because in the last book Leah told her Michael died because her brother Walter told her that he always was with a new woman every week and he was a really bad person and it was so sad because Pauline's pregnant and she's waiting for the baby and so she's been mourning for so long and then for her to like actually see him and then she was like the minute she's just like Leah lied to me I was just like <laughs> my heart but the wood thing the good thing though is that she didn't go to Michael because she saw him sitting there with another woman on his lap drinking having a lot of fun and she's just like I can't go in there I can't talk to him but hopefully she sees that Leah did a good thing for her like telling her that he died was a courtesy to stop her from thinking that he didn't love her and it was a really good like I think it was a, like it's a decision I would have made I think to make like to lessen the blow for my friend but still it's going to be an interesting conversation with them and, and also right with Gwyneth too like because I'm pretty sure she has a daughter but like another family's looking after her and she kind of like goes and visits and like Leah sort of touches on it where she's like they sort of look the same but she won't say anything and then oh right so like Gwyneth talks to the Chancellor and he's an asshole. I hate him in the first book and he's so annoying and then he's like what happened to the baby and I'm just like her baby was with the Chancellor and he's alive and I don't know if that's going to become a part of the story as well and I'm freaking out about all that as well like mm, mm, mm. no deal no so not down so not down and just before I finish my book review I just wanted to add one more thing with Caden actually being Morganese so like I always assumed he was from like was a Vendon person and born there but he was born to a Morganese lord and he was like Ill illegitimate because he was a daughter like the son of a slave but I really want to find out who that lord is like I feel like they're going to be a really important character and someone who's like we've seen before it has a really interesting role like imagine if it was something like the king or something and then it'd be like oh my god but it's not it wouldn't be the king because Caden would be like you know it's your dad and we shouldn't be together because we're like related so like, that would be really awkward but I really want to see this and find out who it is and hopefully it's someone interesting and Leah's gonna probably like be like bitch you left him you did all the wrong things like I oh, can't wait it's gonna be awesome and I'm just so glad that it's like sitting over there it's right there somewhere and it's so big it's like I feel like it's like this big like both of these together is going to be in size like this this much but I can't wait but anyway guys I hope you liked my review of these two books one of my favorite trilogies like of all time and I really love it but anyway guys thanks for watching my video and I'll see you later bye